now join Karen Zoy tomorrow at 11 a.m. That's right, the Queen of Rock for an inspirational talk about her music career and how she transitioned into the digital age. So definitely be sure to check out our website, iStore.co.za, for all the details. And of course, all the other wonderful sessions that we have lined up for you. Remember, when you join us at iStorm, we'd love for you to interact with us during the workshop. So please reach out and say hello in the chat panel. We'd love to hear from you. Where are you joining us from today? What part of the country are you listening in from? And, uh, where are you this afternoon, right? Are you joining us, for example, in Joburg? Are you having the sweltering, hot, beautiful, sunny day? So we'd love to hear from you. Remember, you can also make use of the Q&A option in Zoom, and we'd be happy to hear from you uh, and, of course, answer your questions throughout the workshop. And if you like, you can also share more around today's workshop using the hashtag iStoreMeets. You stand the chance to win a 1,500-rand iStore gift voucher. For those interested in hosting a workshop of their own, you can find out more by emailing our team. Ah, getting some hellos coming from all over the place. This is so wonderful. Here we go. So I see, my goodness, look at this, right? All over. Sure, so many wonderful hellos coming through. Keep them coming in. Me and the team are on the line. Looking forward to chatting to you. Always wonderful to get everybody interacting today. So, of course, as we said, what is it all about today? My message and FaceTime. Hello, everybody. So what I'm going to do is I'm pretty just going to go and share up my iPhone. We're focusing on uh, those two things today. And again, remember, iMessage and FaceTime is actually quite a wonderful thing to talk about and use because it's featured across the board, right? If you've got iMessage and FaceTime access from your iPhone, then you also have access to these things on your iPad and on your Mac as well. And so let me quickly just go and turn on my camera and say hello to everybody. Hey, everyone, how's it going? My name's Alon one more time. Thanks for joining me and taking some time this afternoon. Wonderful to have you on the line. So let's get into it. When you've got your iPhone, especially if you're new to iPhone and you're trying to get into this whole iMessage FaceTime thing, right? Let's uh, talk a little bit about this. A couple of things to remember is that there's always settings behind just about everything we do on our phones, which seems straightforward, but I cannot tell you how many times maybe I've even helped my folks when they've gotten a new device and they, you know, they got iMessage and FaceTime and something is not syncing in the way they wanted to. Maybe calls and messages are not appearing the way they wanted. And so remember, it's all about just checking your settings just to make sure that everything is going to work the way you want it to. So I'm going to tap on settings to get us started. And I've already scrolled a little bit lower down to Messages and FaceTime. So feel free to do that. Open up your uh, settings, go to Messages and FaceTime, and just look at some of the options and how it presents itself. So I can say Messages, right? Now, as you can see, it asks me where would I like to send and receive my information. So for example, at the moment, I'm using just a demonstration phone. I haven't put my SIM card in here. But if you've got a SIM card, it means that you've got both a phone number and an Apple ID. So you can choose if you want to be contacted or send the information from either one of those, right? So when somebody gets a message from you, should it come through from the standard number that is your contact in their phone book, or should it come through from what looks like, of course, an email address, right? Completely, completely up to you. Once again, would you like to share your name and your photo with certain people? And there's so many wonderful, even a read receipt. So as you can see, it tells you people are going to be notified when you've read their messages. Maybe this might be important, depending if it's a business chat, whatever it might be, that might be quite awesome to have. Um, do we want the option for senders SMS? So maybe there's a bit of a network issue, as you can see, right? Network provider comes into play here. And here it means if I can't connect to send an iMessage, which is a data service, it's basically like WhatsApp, it's data messages back and forth then it can send it as an SMS, which is super convenient. By the way, you even have the ability to check you know, your subject field or characters, maybe certain numbers that might need to be blocked from a certain point of view. And what I also love as well is if you keep going down, look at the bottom of this list here, I've got some great options. You can send audio messages. That's right, you can even record audio messages to your friends and family, but then you can choose if you want them to expire. And even this cool option called raise to listen, which you see I have on. So if somebody sends me a voice message, I don't have to open it up, tap, I can see it there, I can just, raise it if maybe I don't want to play out loud for everybody to hear, I can hear it through my speaker. Isn't that really cool? And then on top of that, just another nice thing. Remember that when it comes to sharing photos, I think a lot of us probably do this on something like WhatsApp or something like that, right? The thing we've got to remember is have you noticed, and who's noticed this? Let me actually see with a show of hands in Zoom. Who has noticed that if you send pictures over WhatsApp, the quality decreases a little bit? Who's noticed this, right? You send a picture to somebody over WhatsApp, and the image quality kind of shrinks down. It gets a bit pixelated. It's not what you want, right? Ah, see a whole bunch of hands going up. Okay, you guys are absolutely awesome. Thanks for interacting with us, guys. And here's the whole thing. This is something that I love about iMessage. It gives me the ability by default to have really high quality image sharing. This is great. So I never have to worry about, oh, well, I'm going to lose that resolution. I can share the perfect photo. But if it's taking up too much data or too much time or whatever it is, you can turn on low quality image mode. 
All right, so it does compress it a little bit and just makes it quick and easy if you need to send out a bunch of photos. Okay, so that is some of the messages settings. And I think the same thing's gonna apply for FaceTime. Just a quick touch on that one. Remember, it's gonna say, what do you want it to access? So it's gonna be about, hey, how do your notifications work? When you get a call coming in, how do you want it to appear? So you can just choose how this is going to happen. For example, even should FaceTime announce that a call is coming in, right? And same rule applies FaceTime. Do you want to be reached on your number, on a certain email address? How do you want somebody to contact you? So it's just totally up to you, right? Even the ability to take a FaceTime photo and this cool new feature called eye contact. So I think the problem is, you know, we, we have a conversation with someone and we're looking at them where the camera is just a little bit higher up. In fact, this is something that happens with me on Zoom, right? So I could be just looking at my screen for some notes, but my camera is just above. So maybe the eye contact isn't looking as natural. Well, using incredible software, Apple can create that uh, feeling of you actually looking at someone with real eye contact. Isn't this amazing? So you can look at the screen, enjoy who, you know the conversation with whoever you're having it with, but it will feel as if you're maintaining eye contact. It's actually just a nice little software trick. Oh, okay, fantastic, guys. Keep your questions coming in. My team is on the line and we'll be able to help you with any questions. So thanks, Jane, for your question. We'll definitely help you out in a moment. Awesome, awesome stuff. So now that we've dealt with the settings, let's wipe up, let's really get into it. Let me open up messages. Mine is at the bottom of my screen, that uh, green square with a white bubble. Let's give it a go. Here we are, I message. Okay, so remember though, it's called messages, meaning it's gonna work with both SMS, MMS, as Jane is asking us, and of course, iMessage, Apple's messaging system that works across our devices. And so here you can see I've got a conversation going with a whole bunch of my colleagues. And the first thing you might want to get sorted for yourself is your name and your photo. Maybe you want to adjust these things. What do people see in that little icon on the left when they're interacting with you? And of course, what name is coming through? So everybody watch this. I'm going to go to edit in the top left. And now you see some things, for example, select messages. Well, of course, that allows me to tap select and I can select a group of messages. How many times do you all have that situation, everyone, my goodness, where you go, well, I've got all these OTPs and random SMSs from marketing, and then they just sit there. And you look back at your messages later on, and they sit there, and they sit there, and they sit there. And you have to delete them one by one. Oh, my goodness. So instead, what did I do? Nice. So I went edit, select messages, and I can just tap a whole bunch at the same time. Right? So just keep that in mind. That's quite a convenient thing. Pins, I'm going to talk to you about in just a moment. But for now, edit name and photo. Okay, so I've already set mine there, as you can see, with a fun little emoji. How did that happen? Well, first, it's going to ask me for my name and surname. So mine is iStore Meets Alon, right? There we go, because a whole bunch of us are doing iStore Meets sessions. So I've labeled mine. But really, that first and second line is just your name and surname, right? Do you want this on for name and photo sharing? Is it going to be shared automatically with my contacts? Or must people always ask? So it's totally up to you. But if you don't have a emoji or the icon that you want, everyone, all you've got to do is just tap on Edit. And look at this. There's a couple of suggestions here. Would you like to take a photo? Do you want to use a photo from your photo library? That's going to be one of the first options there, right? Then, of course, you're going to see that little emoji face. So I tap on the emoji face. I can choose an emoji. I can even then start to set a background color, pretty much anything I want, right? Quite fun. It's even going to give me suggestions. It picks up that my name is iStoreMeet. So it's saying, do you want it to be IM, right? Just some cool suggestions. And then even emoji options. This is really cool. You'll see it says Memoji see more. I get a list of all the Memoji options and I can choose my own face or one of the characters. And that can be the face that everybody sees every time I send them a message. This is up to you, right? I love that there's even some suggestions at the bottom. So again, do you want a smiley face? Do you want something sporty or a unicorn or anything that works for you? So all I did was remember, I just went edit under my name and I get the option to start adjusting whatever it is that I want as my main image. Right, so that's all I did. I just selected my emoji. It even then asks you what kind of background do you want. So I just set it as a green and uh, there we go. Done. So now everybody will know that it's coming from iStore Meet Salon with my emoji face. Awesome stuff. So hopefully everybody has got their emoji set up. Now we are going to be talking about emojis and emojis. And if you haven't done this, it'll help you set that up shortly. By the way, if you've never done this at all and you say edit name and photo, it will take you through the process of creating your Memoji, right? That uh, animated version of yourself, quite fun. So now that we're on our main messages screen one more time, I just really want to talk to you, believe it or not, there's actually a whole bunch of swipes and gestures around this that actually are really, really convenient. So let's say, you know, I go into the message that I had with Marius just the other day and I can see here, okay, so one, I'm in this group message. I'm going, wait, so Marius, I sent it Tuesday and then Wednesday replied to me and you can see that I read this on when, okay, perfect, no problem, or he read that. But the thing is, what happens when we start to get into a long conversation, let's say, for example, this iStore meets conversation, 
And there's a lot of stuff happening here, right? Everybody's talking and having conversations and sending pictures and, oh my goodness, this is just crazy stuff. So now, how do I know what was sent at what time? Because I can go, sure, Mario sent this photo. Was it a long time ago? What, what time was this? Maybe I should reply to him now or was it? I'm not sure. If you haven't tried this, hopefully this is going to blow your mind. And again, it's going to make it so much easier to just track what's happening, especially in a long conversation. Anywhere on that screen, just swipe your finger to the left. So anywhere kind of in the center of the screen, I'm just going to place my finger down without any pressure and just swipe to the left. And look on the right-hand side, I can see, oh, okay. So that was a 2.15. At 2.15, we had quite a busy start, but then suddenly 2.16, wait, it took us about three minutes to say, hey, Alon, I'm just doing a test, right? Oh, look at this. So I can keep on going down, swipe between everything and swipe over. I can say, oh, there we go. Things got a little bit busy at 13 minutes past three, then it picked up a few minutes later on. So I can start to see exactly what time things are coming through just by swiping my finger to the left. Pretty great, right? If you ever need to check what time did that person message me or when did I message them, nice and helpful. So now what I'm gonna do is from the right-hand edge, sorry, from the left edge of my screen, there you go, my swipe's coming through. From the left edge of my screen, I'm just going to swipe to the right. Uh, try that everybody, if you ever need to just go back between menus and messages, pretty cool. So I just swipe back, here I am on my main message window. And remember, we said that there's a whole bunch of swipes. It's not just in that message window where I can see what time everything came through. But here's a really convenient thing. On each message, if I swipe left and right on that message, I get some extra options. So let's say I want to take the message with Stefan and I just place my finger on it and I start swiping my finger to the right. Ah, you see, now I can pin a message. That message will always be waiting for me at the top. So no matter how many conversations come through, I can always quick and easily find that one. Isn't it great? The other option I have is swiping my finger to the left of the screen. And I can now mute a certain conversation. So if maybe it is a group chat or whatever it is, and there's lots of messages coming through. Anybody ever had this happen? You're in a group chat and people are just messaging, 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 messaging. There's a hundred messages coming through and you're trying to have a meeting and your phone is buzzing and buzzing and buzzing in the background. Well, you can just mute that conversation. Quite convenient. You notice I'll just give it a little bit of a tap. And if you look now next to Stefan's name, there is a little crescent moon. It's showing me that is on do not disturb that conversation. Everything else functions as normal, just that chat. Later on at the end of the day, swipe again to the left, tap on the bell, and everything's back to normal. You notice as well, I of course also have the delete icon. If I need to delete an entire conversation, just press and it's gone. Right? Maybe there, as I said, there's just that one OTP you don't need, just swipe over. So instead of having to find the message or tap on edit or select it or delete it somehow, swipe, delete. Simple as that. Okay, so now I showed you a couple of minutes ago pinning messages. Well, let's actually look at that. I'm going to swipe on my iStore Meets group to the right-hand side, tap on that lovely little pin, and look what happens. iStore Meets is now always waiting at the top. So no matter what happens with my messages, I've got that one lovely logo right at the top showing, hey, Alon, iStore Meets is pinned. This is a priority group for you. So I can just go into it by tapping on the logo. Isn't that really cool? And then I'm right back into the conversation. Awesome, awesome stuff. Now, keep in mind, I've started a bit of a group chat here with a whole bunch of my colleagues from iStore. And you can actually see at the top of the screen there, right? I still meet with a little bit of a logo for the group and everybody's pictures all around. How did this happen? How did we do this, right? Well, nice and easy. To start it off, I'm just gonna go back. And if you look in the top right, to compose a new message, I tap on the pen and the pad. It's probably, you've seen this a million times in notes and in email, the pen and the pad, right? I can now start typing in somebody's name that's in my contacts. I can tap on the one, two, three at the bottom, start typing in a phone number, or I can tap on the plus, on the top right hand side and it will open up my contacts and I can start just tapping through and seeing who I need to include. It will show me of course my card, my information, but I can just start tapping and including everybody's name that I need. I'm just gonna go cancel in the top right for now. So there's a number of different ways to do this, but that's all I did. I started typing in Marius or Tyler or Stefan and every time a name match came up, I just tapped on their name. So it really is that straightforward. So just to give you an example, if I start going, Marius, for example, you see, it's going to give me all the matches. Hey, I don't know, are you looking for Marius in the group? Or no, I just want to send a message to Marius individually. Haven't had a chance just yet. Tap. And there we go. Oh, but hold on. There we go. It actually picks up an existing message. So if you can't find one, if it's an old one, go to the top, start typing, and it's actually going to take you back to that existing message. If you think, oh, wait a minute, I had messaged this person. Pretty cool, right? As you can see as well, nice and easy, it turns blue. If you look just above my keyboard, it's going to say, I message. Simple, straightforward, right? So now we know I'm gonna be sending Apple to Apple messaging. Great. What happens if I type in, I don't know, let's go oh, two, five, nine, three, five, two, seven or something, right? And I type in a number, ah, but it's green. I just 
typed in a random number, right? So I've got this number here, but it's now gone green. And if you look above the keyboard, text message. So if you're wondering about SMSs, of course the phone has this capability. It's not just an Apple to Apple thing. Uh, but again, if it's green, it's gonna be sending through as an SMS, right? On top of that as well, this is if you start to include any data or pictures or anything, it's gonna turn into an MMS if it's green, right? It's not gonna be handling this in the way that WhatsApp or messaging services do, where it's still just data. This is now an MMS. So just bear in mind if you start to get that information popping up on the screen. So I'm gonna go cancel so we don't send this random number any messages. There we go. So, but here's the thing. Let's go back into this I still meet chat. And all I did remember was I added name after name after name and it makes a bit of a group for me. How did I then label it and do all this wonderful info? Well, I went up to the top where I've got I still meets, tapped on all those little pictures, right? Where it says I still meets, I just gave it a tap. And notice now I can initiate an audio FaceTime call from everybody. So this is something we're gonna be talking about in a couple of moments when we get to FaceTime, a FaceTime audio chat with everyone. And of course, a FaceTime video call, which we'll do in just a second. I'm gonna tap on I for information over there. And what's really nice here is look at that. It gives me all the details. Hey, so we've got Marius, Tyler, Alex, and we've got all these wonderful people here. I can add more people from the group. But something I wanna show you, what happens when you start sharing data back and forth with your friends and family on iMessage? What happens if they send you a photo? Maybe a whole bunch of photos and you wanna find it, you wanna access it, you wanna save it for later. Go into any conversation and as we said, tap on the I, right? And once you do that, scroll all the way down, right? And I can now see, hey, photos at the bottom. If a whole bunch of photos are sent to this group, I'm able to just tap on that photo. And then everybody, look how cool this is. Top right, I've got my share button, meaning I can tap the share button and I can now drop this to my Mac, for example. I can forward this on to somebody else if I wish. I can pop this in a message or an email. I can copy it and paste it somewhere. I can even save it into my photo library. This is great. So if somebody sends me a photo and I go, oh, it's beautiful. I want a copy of that, save. And how did I get there, as I said, by tapping on information, scrolling all the way to the bottom, I find the photo. And I can even see, by the way, that it's from Marius. Everybody see the little trophy icon, which is Marius? If I go a bit higher up, yeah, there he is. So I can actually see exactly who sent that photo in the group. Super awesome stuff. Now, we get to the point where whether you're an individual or a group chat, something else I wanted to show you under I when we're in the information is I can do something great, which is sending my current location or even sharing a location. What happens if a group is meeting or family is coming together, but they don't know where the address is? No problem. Tap on share my location and it says, do you want to share indefinitely? And then you can always make sure that everyone knows where everyone is, keeping safe, or share just until the end of the day, because we've got an event where maybe it's a wedding, everybody's got to make their way through, or share just for an hour, right? I'm at this coffee shop, I'm waiting for you, struggling to find it, share for an hour. The person's going to know where my location is on their side. Done. Easy, easy stuff, right? So these are just some of the options when it comes to sharing location and interacting with your friends and family. Really, really wonderful stuff. Once again, you can see there, change name and photo at the very top, just like I had with my own details, where I tapped on edit at the top and it said edit name and photo, change name and photo. And same rule applies here, right? You can see. So I now have the ability to go through some logos and find pretty much anything that I could want, right? It's really, really wonderful stuff. Ah, now, here's the thing, right? So Irene, remember at this point, when we're talking about share my location, remember what you're doing is that is a feature that is kind of built into iMessaging, Irene. So that's actually a really great question. So if I wanted to share really, as I said, accurate and private and secure location with somebody, I can do that from Apple to Apple users. So when I say share my location, it's sending it out to somebody else that they will pick up on their iPhone in messages, right? Ah, there we go. So the whole idea here is if you think about it, we're saying, hmm, okay, Somebody with you know, an Android device, I'd probably have to use another messaging service or something. But again, we don't always know how safe and secure these things are. And with Apple, everything's very, very protected. So with me, I'm happy to say, share my location, one hour, it's gonna go through to another Apple user and everything's nice and encrypted, right? So that's just a nice benefit there when you think about it. Awesome stuff, okay. Now here's the other thing I quickly wanna to mention to you. Speaking of mentions, when you've got a whole group chat and you've started a group chat with your friends and family, you can see now how easy it is to customize it, how easy it is to label everybody with their own little picture, right, one by one, and share information with really high quality and get safe location sharing. But now I want to send a message to everyone. And so, tap on iMessage, right? We're just above with my keyboard there. And I can start going, hey, Marius, for example. And as it picks up the full name, it's gonna go, hmm, wait a minute, Alon, have you noticed how Marius is now a little bit grayer than the hey? Well, if I tap anywhere on his name, look at this. It says, oh, you mean that contact, Marius? And I go, yeah, that's the one. So now in a group chat, Marius knows if I tap on that little trophy icon that I made for Marius, look at that, his name goes blue. If I send it to the group, 
His name you can see is a little bit bold, just like Stefan's name above. Morris gets a message on his side that he has been mentioned in a group. He gets a little notification. Alon mentioned you in the group. So how awesome is this? So you can actually just start to type somebody's name, pops up, or of course you can use at before their name and then start to type their name and it will give you a list of who to mention, just like in our other messaging services. But you can do this here as well, which is really cool, just by typing a name, tapping on it. It's good to go, oh, now hold on everybody. Did everybody suddenly see what's going, whoa, whoa. My phone is getting messages and shaking and vibrating and what is happening? Well, I'm so excited that happened. So two things. One, if I want to reply just to Marius with this whole group chat that's going on, you can now do inline replies. You can reply to an exact line in the conversation. How do I do this? Press and hold the message that you wish to reply to. That's all. Press and hold. Ah, notice there I've got reply, copy, and even more, right? So I can have copy this, paste it somewhere else. I can tap on reply. And now notice everything is a bit blurry in the background, right? This is actually really, really great. Everything's a little bit blurry, right? This is cool. But now what's wonderful here is I can go, hello, right? There we go. And now it only replies to Marius. If I tap anywhere now in that blurry section, notice now how there's a line going from, oh, hello, Alon, to hello, and they're linked together. So this is how you do a reply to one specific line in the conversation. Press and hold it, tap reply, and now it remains in line. But did everybody notice something else quite fun? I can do something awesome here. What if I need a quick reply? And I don't want to type a whole message, hello, or I'm excited, or yes, or great. Well, guess what I can do? Hey, there we go, look at this. Notice how the loop just keeps happening, and Stefan goes, wait, I'm now replying to Marius as well. It's also part of the loop, isn't this cool? So when other people get involved, I can say, hey, Stefan, I love that you've gotten involved here. Let's make this even better. And so everybody, are you ready for this? Cool little thing where you can double tap a message. So I'm going to, hey, even Tyler, there we go. I'm gonna tap, tap on hello, hello. And look at this, I get the option for reply or I love that, thumbs up, thumbs down. Ha ha, that's brilliant, exclamation. Hold on, wait, what do you mean there with a the question mark? So I can go, Tyler, there we go, excited, right? Stefan, tap, tap, awesome stuff. Thanks for joining, there we go. So how great is this, everyone? I can just give a little double tap on any message and instant replies start to pop through. Is this super cool, right? There we go. Hey, there we go, Sue, hello, there we go. We tap a little bit on Sue, hot, right? So how great is this? This is getting like fun. Now, hold on, hold on. Marius and Stefan are starting to be quite fancy here. What's going on? Well, everybody, let me show you the magic. If I type anything or attach a photo, whatever it is, I can tap on that blue arrow that will send it. But instead, everybody, I want you to try this out. Type something in your text bar and press and hold that blue arrow. Press and hold. And a menu pops up. Everybody seeing this bubble effects? Screen effects. Pretty cool, right? So now, Bubble effects mean I can place an effect on just the text or the photo. So for example, invisible ink, which Steer funded, and I'll show you in a moment what that means. Invisible ink, right? It's quite fun. I can send you the message gently, just a nice calm, hello, how are you doing this morning, right? I can send it loudly, go, hello, answer me. Or if you're really trying to get somebody's attention, I can slam it down and go, now I need an answer, please. So are these not so cool? And by the way, the phone vibrates, if the volume is on, it gives you a little bit of a sound. So it's super, super cool. If you think that's great, Check out screen effects at the top. Are you ready for this? You really want to send a point home? Go, hello, you're not answering me. Can someone get back to me, please? So by saying screen effects, whatever you're sending is going to echo on. All I want to do now is slide my finger from the left to the right in the middle of my screen, and I can send this with a spotlight and pay attention to just that specific item. Or what about balloons? You send happy birthday to someone and it just automatically comes up with balloons on their screen. Right, what about even some uh, excitement? Congratulations, ah, confetti comes streaming down. Isn't this fun? Maybe you're feeling the love a little bit, you're feeling excited to share something. Look at this, hello, with a nice big heart that inflates. And I'm not even joking, when you open this on your phone with the sound on, it will go like you're inflating a balloon, right? Even something like this, lasers, it will shoot lasers with audio across the screen, lots of fun. So this is just absolutely incredible. I love that we're able to do this. And it just takes the capabilities of what we're doing to a whole new level. So I'm gonna send it, with a slam. Now, Stefan sent invisible ink. How do I see Stefan's message? Everybody take your finger and let's see, guys, maybe it's a secret. Maybe it's a secret. And what I love about this is you can send maybe like a nice surprise with invisible ink. So I'm just gonna take my finger and wipe the screen. Hey, what you guys doing? Uh, Stefan, we're showing everybody the magic of iMessage and FaceTime, right? Super, super cool. There we go. And then it goes away. So if you've got a surprise for somebody and you want them to really experience it, Hold that blue icon before sending it, send it with invisible ink, and then 
pretty amazing, right? Isn't that super, super cool? Nice. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's keep on taking this up to another level. You'll notice that if I want, I can instantly include, oh, there, there's slam that hello, hello, and there we go. <laughs> so here's the cool thing, right? Let's say maybe I want to quickly send a photo to everybody. Look just on the left of my iMessage bubble, there is a camera icon. Give it a tap and it instantly opens up my camera. I can take a quick little photo and include it if I want. So that's how easy it is to get a photo into iMessage. Right there on the left-hand side of the screen, camera, you're good to go. If you want an audio message, same thing. You can tap on the right-hand side of the iMessage bubble, start recording audio, boom. But if I wanna take this a step further, everyone, see next to the camera, right next to iMessage, there's the A. Looks like an app store, right? Well, tap on the A. And look at this, direct access to my photo library. So I can now go through the photos and send exactly what I need, instant. I don't have to jump in and out of this or copy from somewhere or it's right there. What about sending something like a an emoji or Memoji? Well, first thing I wanna show you is an emoji and Memoji stickers, right? So what can I do? See the white uh, bubble over there that's got a Memoji with some hearts around it. Well, give it a tap. And I can now go through all the characters, including myself and send Memojis or an emojis with all the famous expressions that we know, the hearts, the kissing, the, you know, the thumbs down, all the cool things, the fist bump, all that kind of stuff, right? So this is actually really, really fun. I love that, that I can do that. Just send all of these. And by the way, all of the Memoji and Animoji creatures have these same effects. What I love here though, is how Apple really took attention to detail. So, I mean, let's say for example, the like mind blown run, right? I love that one, like the mouse with the mind blown and same thing with the octopus with the mind blown, but really start looking at this. I can scroll over and I go to the robot. And look at the robot mind blown. It's got little cogs coming out of the robot's head. I mean, is that not just absolutely awesome? If I keep on going over and we select something like the unicorn, the unicorn mind blown is a rainbow mind blow. I mean, really, really what is going on right here? So this is the level of interaction that we're talking about. A lot of fun that you can have when it comes to these things. So now that we've got this, let's then talk about how I can take this to the next level. I even have built in things like, you know, GIF and animation search built in. Yeah, there we go. Mario is sending us a little bit of one of those. And I'll show you in a moment exactly how he got that pose, right? Other than the stickers, I'll show you something pretty cool. On top of that, look at this. I now have the ability to find certain images. So I can say, oh, maybe like happy birthday. And uh, I know, you know, that maybe like, maybe it's someone's birthday or whatever it is. Well, I can just tap on that icon and I can send it off. The simple tap of the blue icon can send it just like that. And everybody gets that picture sent through to them. So really, really fun. But keep in mind, I can share music I'm listening to. I can even go into some other of my apps, like GarageBand, for example, my music making app, and I can share icons from GarageBand. So I can send everybody a guitar and say, hey, everybody, are you ready to rock out with me this afternoon? Send them a guitar from that, right? But another lovely thing that I just quickly want to point out is digital touch. This is amazing. See that picture of the heart with the two fingers in the black area? Ah, here we go. Digital touch. I can either tap on that and have a small window at the bottom, or I can swipe it up and have a big window. But I'm, I'm happy with the small window at the bottom. I want you to see all the content. So everybody, if you've got your uh, iMessage in front of you, try this out, right? You're really, really going to like this. This is where it gets super cool. I've got that little black window at the bottom, which is called Digital Touch. So try it out. Tap on the A for App Store. Scroll along, and you're going to find it. I can now write something to the group with my finger, choosing color. So on the left, I've got blue. Let's go and make it green. And now I can say, hi, and send. And watch what it does. It sends it back to everybody in the exact way that I wrote it. So if you start to make drawings, animations, all sorts of things, it's going to send it through to them just like that. Is that not absolutely awesome? Now I can do a couple of other things, right? I can really, really get quite creative here, which is super, super cool, right? I can now say, okay, what I want to do, hey, look at this. What are all these things coming through? Wait a minute. Well, guys, I can now use one finger, press on digital that little digital touch area, and I can send a fireball of excitement, all right? Pretty cool. I can now hold two fingers down and show them that my, oh, here we go, sorry, there we go, that was me drawing. Hold two fingers and send them that my heart is beating out of sheer anticipation, right? I just can't wait to see what's coming up. Super cool. On top of this, what did Stefan do? Stefan wants to go, oh, I love that, right? Let me just send you guys a kiss, say, how's it going? There we go, what do we do? Take two fingers, tap once, sends a kiss, right? There we go. And what if you just want to send something a little bit different, a little bit of a different vibe, maybe something sad has happened, well, maybe even a broken heart, why not? This time, instead of just holding down two fingers, hold two fingers and slide them down, hold and slide them down. And look at that, 
a broken heart, right? There we go. So isn't this pretty cool? All the wonderful things you could do. I think it's amazing, right? There's a lot of magic that comes into play here. But now one of the other things I just want to show you then is this. I'm going to swipe over. And we spoke a little bit about the world of Memojis and Emoji. So if I tap on the Memoji one, not the Emoji sticker, the white one, this time it's going to actually pick up my Memoji and obviously start to pick up all my gestures and having a lot of fun, right? I can, of course, do this as any character that I need. But then the cool thing here is any one of these characters, I can then make an instant sticker with any pose that I want or a video recording. So if I want, I can tap on the red icon, video recording, it sends through a video, awesome. Or what if I want a pose to send as a sticker that I'd like to attach to, let's say, let's say those messages there, just like you've got there. Well, you can add a sticker on top of anything in iMessage. And how am I gonna do that? Make a pose and then hold your finger down and drag it up. So watch, I'm just gonna hold my finger after I strike the pose on the mouse. And just like that, I can place this anywhere I want on my screen, right? Isn't this cool? So I just let go at that moment, right? I actually never place it on, but let's try another one, right? Let's see, we've got the cow, we've got Stefan. Let's try one of my favorites, the owl. Place it up and there we go. So as you can see now, I can send an emoji of my face. I can send just about anything I want, stickers of all these characters. And if you ever want more, maybe games that you can play in a group, maybe extra little sticker packs of your favorite media in the world, tap on the A for App Store and it takes you into the App Store here where you can see stickers that are trending games. Look at this, this lovely thing called Game Pigeon. You can actually do games within iMessage. So much fun, I can't even tell you, like these little interactive challenges, so cool. But it will even show you stickers that Apple loves, top paid, top free things. So really, really just a lot of fun stuff. And you can download these, add them into your little App Store section and go wild, have some fun, right? I even went and downloaded one of these things, Classic Mac, right? There we go. So I can now turn around and go, hey, everybody, there we go. Let's send everybody a little Classic Mac sticker. So now that we've seen all the wonderful things that you could do from that point of view, effects and stickers and just really, really magic stuff, Let's quickly talk about FaceTime. Now, FaceTime, remember, if I quickly swipe up to my home screen, I've got the FaceTime app. I can give it a tap. I can once again go through previous conversations or tap on the plus in the top right. And I can now start to type in a contact name, just like we did before with messages. But let me show you the power of having iMessage with most of your contacts. In the event of me wanting to have a conversation with just one person, Tyler, for example, I can tap on her name and look at that. Do I want to FaceTime audio or FaceTime video? By the way, who on a regular basis, let me see with the hands up, uses FaceTime audio? Who uses this? Let's see. I'm hoping we're going to see a lot of hands. Have we got a lot of people using FaceTime audio? Oh, okay. So what I'm hoping is those hands are going to go up big time going forward. Because let me tell you, right? Here's there. Look at this. You see? Ah, Stephen replied to me. I got a notification. But here's the cool thing. What I love here is that with FaceTime audio, the quality is so good, I can't even tell you. It's an Apple to Apple connection. You're calling from iPad to iPhone to Mac and across the board. And it's so clear, it's so, I, I can't even tell you how good this is. You can see I'm getting excited just thinking about it. Ah, I noticed the little blue dot showing me that there's a message waiting for me. Isn't that really, really cool? There we go, lovely. So the thing that I love now is if I tap on iStore Meet at the top, I can now do a group audio chat in phenomenal quality. Oh, everybody be ready for this? Let's try a group FaceTime chat. So I'll tap on FaceTime. And there we go. So now I'm actually calling a whole bunch of my colleagues, right? I'm just going to mute it for now. So we don't have our microphone on Zoom and my microphone on FaceTime. Can you imagine? It would be a little bit crazy. But this is where it gets quite fun, right? I'm able to go and, hey, hello. There we go. What's happening? Oh, okay. So everybody's starting to pop up here. There we go. I'm getting Sue. I'm getting Stefan popping up there. Everybody listen to the craziness of the ice store. Nice, busy, hectic day. And everyone's having themselves a nice little busy day, right? But as you can see, if everyone's not available, it's fine. It's going to happen, right? It's not a problem at all. So maybe could you just say hi to everybody? Hey guys, I'm on Zoom. I hope I don't get feedback on my microphone, but how are you guys doing? Ah, now, hold on. Everybody noticing something really, really cool. As Sue talked, did you notice how it actually made her window a little bit bigger? In fact, uh, Marius, Right, if you were to talk, I'm joined by Marius, my colleague here. Marius, if you were to have a bit of a conversation on your side, I wonder if it's gonna go a little bit louder on your side. All right, let's see, we can maybe even see your bubble start to move. Hey everybody, how are you doing? Nice to be on the call with you. Thank you, Marius. Thanks to you, how are you doing? Nice to see you. Here we go, guys, isn't this amazing stuff? So, really cool, and here's the thing, right? So I'm gonna quickly see if we can post a couple of things. So, Stefan, quickly let us know, right? Stefan, when it comes to group FaceTime, 
right? Are there any limitations here? I mean, how many people can myself, if I'm number one, how many extra people can I include? Oh, of course, look at me now, my mic is on mute, right? So Stefan, Stefan, I'm gonna quickly hand it over to you. If I'm person number one, and I wanna have a bit of a group FaceTime with everybody, how many extra people can I invite now? Or is there like a bit of a limit here? You can invite up to 32 people on the group. Thir can you imagine this guys? 32 people in one group on FaceTime. This is absolutely insane, right? So look at this, we've got Tyler and Stefan and myself and Stu. I love, oh no, hold on, hold on. Marius, Marius, what's going on? Wait a minute, what's happening here? This is blowing my mind. Okay, so Marius, I think you need to teach me how did you do this? How did you do this, guys? In the middle of a FaceTime call, Marius, how did you make that happen? Hello, Alan, and uh, yeah, let's try this out. So uh, what you can do is you actually go to the effects button. So if you look on FaceTime on your screen, if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see there's a button that says effects. And you'll see there's a whole bunch of things. And this is actually similar to what we saw earlier on on the iMessage section, right? You can see there's uh, an emojis, there's six. Uh, awesome. So try out maybe tapping on that one on the left, which is your an emoji option, and choose one of those options. Okay, okay, very cool. And then, hey, just like that, right? it starts to apply that effect. Okay, very, very nice. So now I've got myself my little emoji. Fantastic, I'm gonna push the X. Anything else I can do here? I've always seen people going, you know, having a lot of fun on this thing. Uh, yes, there's actually quite a few things. So you can see again, if you swipe to the bottom, there's a little option there and you can do little things like stickers even, right? We saw this in iMessage as well, but you can do stickers. You can do effects on the call. So maybe you want to have your video look like a, I don't know, an old video camera or something with those little lines scanning across the screen. So try it out. Maybe try and, effect, try and apply effect to your video or maybe uh, write something on the screen. There's literally a ton of things there along. That is super cool. So as you said, those three little bubbles, oh wow, I can put a bit of a filter, make it look like I'm an animation. And understand guys, this is happening live the whole time while I'm on a FaceTime call. This is where it's mind blowing, right? On top of that as well, I can even push some text and I can say, hey, text over there. I can go, hello everybody, there we go. I can move it around wherever I want. And I think what's really cool, can everyone see how it's actually following me, which is just the coolest thing about this, right? So that's what makes this so much fun is that we can really be quite creative here and have an amazing experience over FaceTime. Super, super cool. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm quickly just gonna swipe down these little animations and uh, see, is anybody else? There we go, okay, so, right? Ah, see, there we go. Tyler, Steven, Tyler's taking a mask off. There we go, Sue's still there. So guys, I mean, I'd, I'd love to see, right? Like when it comes to these animations, this is where it gets totally, totally brilliant. We've got you know, a bit of a farmhouse happening here, Marius and myself, all his animals, but uh, this is where the fun starts to happen. Where we can suddenly see that when it comes to having a group FaceTime, doesn't matter. By the way, uh, Tyler, are you, hold on, everything's looking very nice and still on your side, and Sue as well. Are you on your phone, Tyler? <laughs> Sue, you're also on your Mac as well, hold on. And Stefan, what about you? On iPad? Okay, hold on, hold on. So guys, this is completely crazy. Marius is applying effects. I'm running the call through Zoom. Tyler's on a Mac. We've got Sue on a Mac. It's definitely on an iPad. And before you know it, look at this quality. Listen to how everything sounds. It's truly, truly amazing. Guys, I mean, let's be honest. We all know that there's other messaging systems out there, but I'm going to ask our trainers on the line, how often when it comes to maybe having a quick video chat or even in a, you know, a data call with someone, like, you know, a voice message, how often do you guys end up using FaceTime, you know, as your FaceTime audio or FaceTime video calls. How often do you do this? All the more often than normal. Always. <laughs> Always. Whenever actually. I can, I actually use FaceTime. There we go. There we go. Because you heard it. Prefer oh to use it than any other video platform. Exactly. There we go, right? So again, look at this. I can actually start to see where everything is happening. I'm getting all these windows moving around and it's kind of coming bigger and smaller on my side. You guys are amazing, man. You guys are absolutely brilliant. It's so cool to see that you guys are joining us from different devices and having this cool experience and telling everybody about how much fun they can have on FaceTime. So thank you guys. I can't wait to see you all again in person because again, who have we got here? Hold on. So Sue, Sue, where are you joining us from? I am joining you from Durban in Isto Pavilion. Oh my goodness. Stefan, hold on. What part of the country are you in right now? I'm in Centurion, Pretoria. Nice. And Tyler, hold on, a little further away, right? Yes, I am all the way at the Eistel Queen's Hotel v in Cape Town. Oh my goodness, look at this, guys. Cost country talk between everybody. This is super cool. Guys, cannot wait to see you all again. Have yourselves an awesome day, and we will chat soon. You Yay. too. Have a lovely day. Bye. Cheers, guys. Bye, everybody. <laughs> oh my goodness, guys. So again, look at the magic. And by the way, I get a review, FaceTime, right? 
can see there's maybe still one person active waiting to join. Ah, it ended, right? So this is the magic of using iMessage and FaceTime, everybody. We've, again, covered just a couple of things, but there's always these extra little things in there. We've tried to make it as much of information as possible into one, right? So as you mentioned, we're getting some questions. How do you get onto the call, right? There we go. If somebody's in that group, right? If you're part of that group and the person pushes the call, remember, so I go back into my Arsenal Meets group. If I tap on FaceTime at the top, just by tapping on the name of the group, it calls everybody who's part of that group. So if you're available and you've got a device, you're good to go, right? Really as simple as that. There we go. So guys, I hope you've had a little bit of fun with us. Just a nice quick session, just to talk about the ways in which you can really enjoy messages and FaceTime on your device. And I hope you find it that, you know, you're going to get a lot more use out of these things going forward. So in the meantime, it's a big thank you from me. It's a big thank you to all our trainers. It's a big thank you to Marius as well on our Q&A and chat line. It's been awesome having you join us today. And uh, everybody, we look forward to seeing you on another iStore Meet session. Jump onto our website. Remember to book for that Car and Zoid session tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. And I hope to see you again in the future, everybody. For now, have a lovely afternoon. Take care. Catch you soon. Cheers.